kind of Maddox is Heather Huntington from Nassau Community College and I'm excited to have this opportunity to share with you some of the tricks I've been using to teach remotely this semester. Well, I, as you can see behind me, I've purchased a whiteboard and in the corners you might be able to see that I have these orange beacons. These are called rocket beacons. And how that works is it, it, I can scan my board. It's not that the board is a smart board, but I use my cell phone. So I downloaded the app on my cell phone. And then after I have a complete board, the students know what I'm doing and they're usually still copying down things. So then I come back and I, once the beacons are in view, it captures the board. And then I click next. And I've already set up my Dropbox folder. So it goes right to a cloud space of my choosing. So I'm going to put it in my rocket scans ones. And now it's sent it already to my Dropbox folder. And then when I'm at my computer, I do organize the file names to be a little better. So I would put the unit number, the if it's classwork or homework or whatever. And I have that, I have my systems for naming the files. And now what I do is I put it in a folder for the students as a web link in, in Blackboard. So they know that they could go through Blackboard and access all of my board scans. So that's been helpful. And then uh, some other things I kind of like. If somebody does a good job, I've got these little sound bite buttons. So this is an applause one. And then I've got a, a think positive one. So those can be fun sometimes just to mix it up. And then some other things. Yeah, I really like this idea. I came up with it because, you know, we don't always have to have so many digital things, I think, during class, having just these cards. So I bought these growth mindset cards. And what I do is I can pick a random one in class, and this will be our motto of the day. And so, as you can see, this one says, I learn from the feedback and criticism from others. Okay, so that could be our motto of the day. And then what I do is I use the, it's a magnetic board, so I put it up here in the corner. That's been helpful and fun. And then the last thing I want to show you is how I use my iPad to create asynchronous videos. I have an Apple Pencil. I invested in an iPad, which has been helpful. So in Google Slides, I create, um, I create my base lectures. So you see I've already annotated these. Um, I, could I think you get the idea. You create the, the background part, and then every anything that's my handwriting, I've annotated. OK, so then the question becomes, well, how how do I uh, record myself? So I've, I use just the iPad feature. So if you come up here into your widgets, now I, it's not a default. So you have to hold down on the screen capture button. And then if you notice down here, it says microphone on. So as it's screen capturing, it actually has the microphone on and it records my voice. I've experimented without using a microphone and with using a microphone. And so far I've been using it with a microphone. So I have that little headset that helps me to make my voice more clear. Honestly, I've noticed that there is a hum in the background and I would like at times, so I'd like to get rid of that. So if you have any advice for me, that'd be great. So once I make sure that the microphone is on and if you create a lecture, I definitely recommend doing a small bit first and going back and checking to make sure that your voice is recorded because you don't want to, it'll probably happen once, you know, record something for five minutes and then you go back and look at it and you notice, oh, it didn't even capture your voice. It could be an external microphone on anything. It just wasn't plugged in. So once I click on that button now, up in the upper right hand corner, I have that record on. And since this is downloaded, to Notability, which is very easy to do. If you have a Google slide, you just import it. And now I can talk and write and I can, and, and 
for one slide. You can even flip to other slides if you want, but I usually just do one slide at a time. I press stop. Now it's gone to my iCloud. I can go back and do that. And then at my computer, I use iMovie. And I include all of those, those slides that I've created, small videos, basically. And I put a transition between them. It's cross -devolve, dissolve. And then you end up with something like this that you can post on YouTube. So here's, I have a YouTube channel now with uh, about 40 videos so far for my logic course. Translate an English sentence into a symbolic logic statement and translate a symbolic logic statement into an English sentence. Okay, so we Hello and welcome to Matt 101 at Nassau Community College. This is Dr. Huntington and I will be discussing section 1.1, Introduction to Logic. The textbook for this course is Logic and Set Theory with Applications, 7th edition. Okay, so I just wanted you to see at least one transition there. Um, the students have had great feedback. I give them credit for posting in discussions. They email me. They, they seem to like it. And of course, I supplement with additional videos from YouTube, but that's been um, the way I've been creating asynchronous lectures. And I think that's about it that I'd like to share. And I'm really looking forward to what I what you all have to share with me and if you have any advice for any of the things I'm doing that and in, in a way that I can improve them please email me at heather.huntington at ncc.edu and I would love to hear what you have to say so have a great day thank you all